Yeah, yeah. So shift and location much as I mentioned I would go through it. I it's like any functionality the last few months. I haven't now we haven't used this somewhere out of real life anymore. So far we don't have in depth uh, knowledge on it. Then I assets reports, asset maintenance, design side things like asset capitalization and so on. Yeah. And value adjustment, but more or less the same. Maybe this one should come in. Okay, the reason I'm bringing asset capitalization, they are one of the examples. If, for example, if you are doing what we call composite assets, because the RP next enables that. Uh, think of somewhere you are assembling a big asset like a plant. So you can have like a, what we call a composite asset. Then as you keep buying uh, sub-components of the asset, you keep tagging the composite asset. And then later on you can capitalize the asset. So that's one of the examples. So when I talk about all these uh, generally, I assume you are kind of a bit familiar with assets management. So you are looking for what you have to next come off as far as assets management is concerned. There's asset maintenance and the... Uh, yeah, it's like maintenance too. Uh, and teams and so on. This is a new functionality. Some of these asset repairs and so on, they are relatively new, but uh, they are stable at the work. Very nice. So if there are no questions on this summary, I will go straight to the system unless someone has a question. Nothing. Okay. Mm. So the first step normally when you're doing assets in your next is a, this is the asset register as it is. So let's assume you're starting an implementation for example, or even if you are a company who is uh, setting up this for your internal use for example. There are two ways you can bring in assets into the system. You can do what we call it. Uh, generally there is a template and uh, it is very clear what are the fields that you want to fill for you for an asset. The other option is on doing a issue operations where you purchase an asset and so on and so on. So maybe let me start with the process of purchasing an asset. Uh, the way we... The process of purchasing an asset starts from creating an item of type asset in your next, for example. Uh, and this one we can call it something like uh, say Lenovo, just as an example. Lenovo, I don't know, let me just use a random code here, 389, and then we can have this as an asset, a fixed asset, here you can have numbers for example, it doesn't matter how pieces, I'm not sure why it vanishes. Then here now you need to pick a, it's an asset for example, you have to take a step so that you need an asset. You can say how to treat asset on the patches. You can say grouped asset. Uh, this concept is a uh, think of a uh, if you're buying Lenovo that you deny eventually each individual is, uh, is an asset, for example, assuming you have bought several of them. So that's the whole concept of treat group asset. We can pick the category of asset. Uh, computer and computer accessories. I'll come to this later. We will should have started with asset categories for example. But let me just go through this process and then you can create this. So once you have this, uh, normally you initiate uh, the purchase of the asset through the normal process for example uh, under buying. So you can even start with a purchase receipt for example or purchase invoice. It doesn't matter. Let me just do a purchase invoice of type by date stock. We can say we are buying this from a uh, uh, Ruban supplier, whatever this gentleman is in the demo. We can say we are purchasing this. Uh, we can say we are buying probably two, just as an example. Uh, we can say each will cost around 40,000. This is a, this is probably an average rate in Kenya for this kind of assets. Uh, I think it fits the wrong currency. I actually don't know why it does this. This is our demo environment. Mm -hmm. 
suspect someone has done a lot of mumbo jumbo learning. We can pick the tax uh, template for this, for example. Mm. You can set it on the item card if you are familiar with the Arcanex tablet. And we can just save this, for example. Now, what I want to do is I want to save this as well. I've typed up the entire LMC stores. And then there's something you need to do here so that you can make it how to pick the asset. You need to pick the asset location. I'll come to that later. You can say this will be going to finance office, for example. So this is what I was saying. Assuming you're doing a composite asset, you can pick it here, for example. A composite, I was saying, is a, think of even a big laptop and you have those two sub, subsequent components, monitors, separate assets, uh, keyboards, TV, something. So if you have a composite asset, you can reference here. So that you, you're kind of constructing something an asset, which will eventually capitalize. Then we can just save this and we submit. So it will auto create the asset uh, which will open here. Yeah? So it will create two assets. And it was, uh, as I was saying, if you bought two, there will be individual assets and so on. So from here you can come and you love all the information you can have the asset and if you want uh, you can set department with the custodian is composite and so on and so on. When is it available for use? Because this matters for example uh, Available for use is more or less when you start to differentiate an asset. Mm. Means when we come to asset categories, we can talk about C for what we call working progress. The idea is until you start using an asset, you shouldn't start to differentiate and so on. It will pick the purchase amount and so on and so on. So that's the process of procuring an asset, and you can see it kind of as the process is for you. If I had ticked this group, it would have created what? One asset with a the big figure of 8,000 and so on. Um, so that is the process of procuring. So let me just go through asset categories and then I'll just run through this uh, for example one one by one until you do reports. It's a small uh, module. Not small, very big actually depending on the organization but webinar I see it doesn't have a lot of stuff to cover. When we are defining assets, you have uh, various assets. Uh, don't worry about all this. I'll uh, just pick one for example, the one we just used. So you can have uh, computers and computers accessories. Uh, you pick the depreciation method, it comes with three and the manual one. You can have the total number of depreciations. When you come to Kenya, generally, the depreciation rate is a percentage. There is a formula we use to convert. I, I didn't see it, but I know uh, our team they kind of use it to convert to the total number of depreciation and the frequency, for example, every month and so on. Then you can pick to each company, which is the fixed asset account, it will cost you accumulated depreciation account and the depreciation expense account. If it's a CWIP, you can uh, kind of target here. The CWIP basically means when you buy this asset like uh, you saw, until you have an available use date, it will, uh, when you purchase it, it will post in a capital work in progress until uh, available for use date when it will to post the transactions into the actual asset account. But this is the setup for asset categories. Then when you come to your asset, uh, for example, this is now based on that, uh, we already we have uh, an asset category. Uh, it will allow to pick these details based on the asset category that is selected, for example. Maybe we can say available for this today, for example. Uh, yeah. I'll come to maintenance later if you have what we call a uh, check if asset requires preventive maintenance and so on and so on. But this is the basic idea. Then we can save this. Uh, schedule the list of the crypt so that I think it is a schedule. What does that have to do with me? What does that have to But you see what you have been next by based on your depreciation and uh, configs you have done on the asset category. I, I'll come to the question, but generally it creates such a schedule, for example, for the duration of that asset. 
and they may every month automatically to post uh, the position entry. I'll come to the ones that are already depreciating. Uh, for example, it post to just a deposition entry every month of the period you have defined, for example. Uh, sorry, I asked you. I don't know if someone is stuck with me. Okay. No problem. So the depreciation method, say, frankly, probably I'm not the one who is best equipped to to explain those straight method and so on. But I know they are very well documented here. So some things I reference are as you are doing, for example, or depending on what the customer says. Maybe you can check them out later. Or I would assume whether it's your accountant or the consultant or the other end of the advice. Maybe. But it is in the money. They explain a bit more. It just didn't have time to give examples. Didn't have time much. So the other element is a concept of asset location. So when you have an asset, uh, let me just take on one that is kind of uh, going to position. These are samples, they are not, uh, they are not real cases. But I'm saying now you have your asset, it has your deposition, something like this. So this is what I was saying. Every month of the period you set for your deposition, you can post a journal entry, which is a deposition entry, which is accumulated against the deposition and so on. So now you have your asset, what can you do with your asset, for example? And that's where all other processes come in, for example. There's what we call asset move. Basically, this is you can assign, you can transfer from location to location. You can assign an employee an asset, for example. Or you can issue an employee an asset and so on. You can do asset maintenance, I'll come to this because probably it's somewhat like a submodel, for example. You can adjust the value of an asset. You can capitalize an asset, I'll let them a few examples. Or you can repair an asset, for example. So, for example, when we talk of uh, what we call asset, uh, open asset with us, for example, it's just one example. Uh, some of the things you can do and I uh, you can capitalize an asset when you're repairing it. You can consume stockable items, for example, like you would know, say you're repairing a vehicle and there's a uh, spare part you need to consume from your store, you can include them here and then they'll be included in your capitalizing your asset and so on and so on. Mm. Asset and so on. The other activities you can do around an asset, uh, we are talking of a uh, station processes, for example. You can uh, scrap an asset, you can sell an asset. Basically, selling is basically a sales thing because you're selling to a potential customer and so on. Uh, you can split an asset uh, and, and so on. Uh, when it comes to maintenance, uh, it's a whole process. You can define what we call an asset maintenance team, for example, if need be, for example. And you can assign the people who will be responsible for maintaining a particular asset as you define them. And then you can have what we call asset maintenance. Uh, it's like a schedule, for example, something like this. So you can see you'll be maintaining this asset, and these are the maintenance tasks. And you can have them as scheduled, and who is uh, responsible, and so on and so on. And later on, you can have what we call asset maintenance, uh, logs or schedules, and so on. 
in terms of reports, one of the most common reports, for example, is fixed asset register, which comes with the system. So it will show you all your list of your assets uh, and their depreciation, opening uh, depreciation, opening de accumulated depreciation is, uh, for example, when you're bringing existing assets, will ask you for accumulated depreciation of a period of time and so on, or it's required in you. The gross purchase of the asset relates to its available use to it, asset value and so on. It will have other information, for example, the consent department and so on. Because centers, there are some people who assign assets to particular centers because maybe they want uh, when the asset position is being posted, it's posted against a particular center. It's a normal scenario. Another thing I was asked a while back, actually, I haven't uh, kind of arrived at that is some assets are attached to a particular project. And you might want the depreciation expenses to go to that particular project. But the thing with projects, for example, is you, are, you can move assets from one project. You know, do it, but it is the uh, And then uh, when you're doing your asset register, you can either go to by asset category or by location. Basically, it kind of shows you these figures by your asset uh, categories you are defining the system. Or you can filter by asset category and so on, or for a particular fiscal year and so on and so on. I think I should stop so Unless there are questions, so sometimes I think it's a waiting as people love my questions and just seeing the demand of the system in my view. The questions we can add. But uh, before we have some big checks, probably I'm not sure, frankly. You may know your fixed asset register. I don't know, unless someone checks. But I'm not sure, probably this will be the right forum. Maybe you can ask from the forum and someone can check. But generally, it must be a set of issue. Uh, it works perfectly as far as I'm concerned. So, right. If there are no questions, we will probably close the There's one person also on the chat box, uh, Mukesh. He says, I'm just willing to know some important keys, key points to remember while doing fixed asset transaction. I don't know if you have these key points to remember, but uh, available for use date is critical. Asset category, of course, is critical which accounts you are posting to their critical and so your asset uh, deposition method of course very critical and, uh, and that one you need to get from the company if it's internal or the other company they need to advise you you need to check so that you can advise and then of course the deposition uh, period and rate which depends on the company again
all right then if you we don't have any other questions we can conclude here um in case you have any other follow-up question that you remember later feel free to reach out to our email the one that you got an invite to from the registration email and uh, feel free to share comments and other feedbacks that you may have thank you so much we will be having our webinars on friday so be on the lookout next friday we'll have another webinar on another module thank you so much for attending thank you so much moshai everyone have a good day thank you oh hi adam uh, we just concluded the meeting today today's webinar was very brief on the asset module but we will share a recording with you oh, great great yeah yeah we we missed you we we yeah it's okay all right all right thank you so much for attending i'll personally share the invite uh, the the webinar uh recording with you i'll be humble all right, all right.